is up everybody welcome to the group my name is katie blanchard i am a physical therapist specializing in treating scoliosis via the Schroth method and i put together this group to share with you all and help you and kind of educate you so that you can help your children better um, and so that we could hopefully stop the progression of scoliosis so that we could prevent surgeries you know prevent um pain and problems down the road that scoliosis can cause. So this week, we are gonna be going over three different exercises for a right-sided thoracic and left-sided lumbar curve in the spine. And so I wrote on my board behind me, T right, T-R-I, L left, L-L-E. So that is the curve pattern that we're gonna be focusing on this week. All right, so if you are on here live, please put in the comments that you are watching live by just putting the waving emoji or something so I can give you a shout out. Um, and thank you for being on here. And if you're going to catch the replay and you're watching the replay later in the group, also just comment the word replay so that I know we are on the right track and giving you guys what you really want to learn in this group. Awesome. So before we start, let's talk about that curve pattern, the thoracic right and the lumbar left, okay? Um, make, let me just make sure that we look okay in the group and that we are going live. All right, everything looks good. So, I posted an x-ray in the group that was for that right thoracic, left lumbar curvature, and we had a really, really good question because looking at it, it looks like the curve actually goes to the left and then to the right. So there's two different viewpoints of x-rays that we can see the viewpoint from. Either the x-ray is looking at the spine from the back or it's looking at the spine from the front. So we need to know which direction we're looking from to really make sure that your child has that right-sided curve to in the upper back and left-sided curve in the lower back. Um, so in general, I'll show you another x-ray here. So, this is another x-ray. This is also a thoracic right and a lumbar left curve. And so in this x-ray, it does look like that the thoracic spine is going to the right this way, and then the lumbar to the left this way when we're looking at the picture. Another way to check that your child definitely has that right-sided thoracic and left-sided lumbar is making sure that the curve actually goes opposite of where the heart is located because the heart is always located on the left side of the chest. So here, the heart is this blob of coloration here. And you can see that the spine curves to the right opposite of that left-sided heart. So we know it's a right-sided thoracic, left-sided lumbar curvature of the spine. And if you're still confused looking at your child's x-ray, you can always find there's either a little L or the letter R somewhere on that x-ray which will tell you which side you're looking at. So in this x-ray it's like all the way up here kind of cut off on my picture but if you look really close you can kind of see an L on that side so that's the left side of the screen and you can see that the spine is curved to the right there. So I hope that is helpful but before we dive into this curve pattern and before you try any of these exercises with any of your, your children or with yourself, you want to make sure that you have this curve pattern. Otherwise, if your curve is actually opposite, we could make your scoliosis worse. So make sure that this is the pattern of your curve before you delve into these exercises. Awesome. Okay. So a few things that you're going to need for this exercise. The exercise is called prone on knees. You'll need a few bean bags and then what is called a traction belt. The traction belt is optional um, and I'll show you a few different ways you can do it without the bean bags, but ideally you use this traction belt, okay? So let me lower my screen down here so you can see my yoga mat. And I'm gonna show you what these things look like. So these are my bean bags. These are used for Schroth exercises. Um, they're just rice bean bags. So I have one wedge shape and then I have three rectangular ones here. They come in fun colors and patterns. Um, I get mine from a website called happysew.com. It's a lady that sells these specifically for scoliosis. She's super nice and friendly and she makes everything awesome for your kids. 
Um, so those are the bean bags, three rectangular, one wedge. And then this is called a traction belt, okay? So basically it's a belt. Mine is Velcro. And then you have this strap here, which is just a longer type of stretching belt and it connects via buckle. So I have this connected to my trough bars here. Um, you can also just connect it to a table at home, your kitchen table, something really sturdy and use it there. You don't need the trough bars for this exercise, which is great. It makes it very home friendly. Okay, so because our spine goes to the right at the top and the left at the bottom, we're gonna wanna open up the left side of the upper back. So that's the concave side of the thoracic spine. And why do we wanna open up that thought? We wanna open it up by raising the left arm high during this exercise, create space, so that the spine can then move from the right over towards the center, towards the left. Because if we don't open up the left side, then it's like a brick wall is there and we can't get the spine to move back towards the center. So we need to open up that space. Okay, so in general, for this curve pattern, left arm is always gonna be high. Perfect. All right, and then we're gonna get our setup here. So during this exercise, we're gonna focus on a Schroth breathing, um, and I'll teach you how to be specific to this curve type for your Schroth breathing. Before in my other videos, I was talking about general Schroth breathing, which applies to every curve. Um, so in this positioning, you're gonna be doing Schroth breathing, and then you're also gonna have that left arm up high, and the belt is gonna be pulling your right hip downwards, and that's gonna create elongation and traction in the, in the spine. Traction meaning separating and kind of pulling the spine lengthwise to further straighten the spine. So expansion and elongation during this prone on knees exercise. All right, how are we doing here? Any questions yet? All right, we got Robin watching. Thanks for being on Robin. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments live and I'll answer them right here for you. Okay, so this is what the the exercise is gonna look like. I'm gonna take my traction belt and I'm gonna string it through my loop and then this is gonna go around my waist. And this is gonna go pretty low on the waist because I want it around my pelvis and I want it to be relatively tight. So if you feel the bony parts of your hip here, that's where you want your belt. You don't want it up on your belly or on your belly button. Then I'm gonna slide this loop in the back over towards my right butt muscle. So it's gonna pull my right hip downwards as it kind of pulls my hips back. Next, I'm gonna grab one wedge for my forehead and then I'm gonna have one up high to my left for my left elbow going high and then one, two stacked on top of each other for my right elbow, which is gonna stay at a 90 degree level, which is lower, okay? So all together, this is what the positioning is gonna look like. You're gonna go down into almost like a, like a kneeling position, forehead on this band here, this bag here, right elbow on these bean bags, two stacked up on top of each other, it's gonna lift the elbow slightly higher and push the right sided prominence that these curves have forward. So there's usually like a prominence that sticks out in the back along the right shoulder blade. So by lifting up the, the right elbow, that helps push that prominence forward. So that's the reason behind having two bean bags on your right and then one high on your left. So this is your setup. Forehead down, right hand straight across, left one nice and high opening up the spine. And then as you can see, the traction belt is pulling my right hip downwards and back. And so basically this position is gonna create what we call a traction line from my fingertips here all the way down to my right hip. So it's a straight diagonal line from my fingertips to my hip. And that's what's gonna help pull my spine into the correct position. Now, once I'm down in this position, I'm gonna be doing my Schroth breathing. So I'm gonna breathe in through my nose. 
Rib cage expands and now through my mouth. And I'm keeping that rib cage large and expanded with building pressure as I breathe out. And so I'm just gonna hang out in this position and perform my Schroth breathing for like four or five minutes. And that's truly the best way to do the exercise is just set a timer for yourself. That way you're not rushing and trying to count reps. Four to five minutes in this position and just really, really nice and slow. Breath on the way in through the nose, out through the mouth, okay? And so that is the positioning with Schroth breathing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about Schroth breathing in this position. So basically, for a right-sided thoracic and left-sided lumbar curve, I'll show you the x-ray here. Perfect. We want this curve in the upper back to move this way, okay? So when you're breathing, this is your whole rib cage, all your ribs here, you're breathing in and you're expanding on both sides. But now, because of this curve, we wanna open up the left side more. So we're gonna think about directing our breath to the left side of the upper back here. So in through the nose, expanding here, out through the mouth. Keep it big and expanded until you run out of breath, and then you're relaxing, okay? So focusing on pushing that breath out and back into the left side of the upper back. And so that location on me, if you look at my back, I have a right-sided curve, and then the left upper back would be here. So I'm expanding my rib cage, pushing out and back, and thinking about the pressure pushing this way as I breathe. Okay, so that's the focus of the breath, is pushing into the left side, which is the collapsed side of the spine. Okay, so that is the gist of this exercise. It's called prone on knees. You're in that nice inverted position, which distracts and tractions the spine. Left arm nice and high, right pelvis is being pulled downwards, and you're just performing trough breathing in that position. Perfect. All right, so thank you guys for being on here live. If you have any questions, throw them below in the comments, um, and I will answer them as soon as I can. And I have a challenge for you. Now that I've demonstrated this for you, if your child or yourself falls into this curve pattern, feel free to video or take a picture of yourself in the position or doing the exercise. And if you direct message me, this a video of you doing it, I'll give you feedback on it. Um, and this is just because I wanna help. You know, I'm not gonna charge you for this. I'm not gonna um, you know, criticize you. I'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to tweak your form, tweak your breathing, so that you can really improve and that this will be the most beneficial for your kiddos. Awesome. All right, well, everybody have a wonderful Monday night. Again, if you have questions, just let me know. Otherwise, we will be seeing you next on Wednesday.